In the previous video we looked at how you can manipulate your 3D model prior to making the final settings for 3D printing. Now we're ready to do that we can move to the right hand side of Cura and make those final settings. At the top we've got the ability to specify the material we're going to be using. Down below that the nozzle size that the printer is going to be using to make the print. That's a pretty significant um, piece of information that Cura will need. In this case we're going to use a 0.4mm nozzle so that's already selected. And then we move down into the print setup area which is currently showing the recommended settings option which is a really good place to start when you're setting out on 3D printing because it really reduces down to a minimum number the things that you need to change in order to prepare a 3D print. The one at the top is a fairly significant one it's the layer height for the model. This will specify how thick or how thin each particular layer will be to construct your 3D model as a physical 3D print. And if you use the 0.06 option down at the left hand end, then that is a very, very thin layer. There will be a lot of layers in the, in the print to, to create your print using that kind of thickness and the print time will go up accordingly. If you choose 0.15 on the other end of this scale, then that is a much thicker layer. It will print much quicker, but maybe you'll lose a little bit of quality. So right in the middle, there's an option for 0.1, which is actually a good compromise between speed and quality and, and a generally a good place to start for most 3D prints. Just below that, you've got infill. Infill is the structure that's going to be put inside of this model and that's really down to you to specify. 3D printing is primarily concerned with the outer surface of the model. What goes on inside the model is generally down to yourself to choose. Now in infill if I choose the 0% option that means that the inside of this model will be completely hollow. So it's just going to print the outer surface and leave the inside hollow. That could be quite acceptable in some cases. If you move to 100% at the other end of the scale, that means that this model will print completely solid. Now that will take a long time for a significant size model and it's something that you probably only very rarely do. So generally you're going to be working in the 20%, 0 to 20% area. 20% is probably as much infill as you generally ever need. Uh, in this case I think 10% might actually be acceptable. So I'm just going to set that at 10%. The two options below that generate support and build plate adhesion we'll talk about in a later video. These aren't required for this particular model so we're going to leave those unchecked. And what you'll see now down at the bottom of the screen is Cura is calculating the slices that it needs to print to recreate this model. And when that bar gets to the end then it's completed its calculations and it comes up with a really important piece of information just below which is the print time. So you can see this is a 10 hour print and it also shows you just below the print time the amount of material that you're going to need to actually make this print with these settings. It gives it in two ways both as a length of filament which is the material that goes into the back of an Ultimaker printer in terms of a length and also a weight of filament so you get that piece of information in two different ways and now you've done that you'll see that there's an icon next to that I've got a USB drive plugged into the computer which will now allow me to actually save that information to a removable drive that I can then plug into the 3D printer and hopefully this is going to generate a successful 3D print except there's one thing that we need to do before we go any further and that is you need to look at the layers view this is currently showing the solid view you can see that in the um, top area of the screen next to where it says Ultimaker 2 we're currently looking at the solid view what we really need to be doing is looking at the layers view because only the layers view will really tell you what's going to be 3d printed and I would recommend everybody to check the layers view before you do any 3D printing. It can significantly increase your success rate with 3D printing and make sure that you're not printing things that aren't going to come out successfully. Now when I, when I flick to the layers view you can see now it's telling me there are 960 layers in this particular print which is why it's going to take 10 hours. And 
if I grab on this button and now start running down through the model, you can see layers, layer by layer, the way this model is going to print. And what you're looking for in this layers view are any areas that don't look like they're going to print out correctly, uh, any problem areas, any overhang areas, which we'll talk about in a later video. And basically this is your last final quality check that everything looks good and basically what you see on the screen is what you're going to get when your 3D print um, finishes. So having looked through that, this all looks very good. We're now ready to 3D print this model and save it to the removable drive. And having looked through the layers view, hopefully we're going to get a successful 3D print off the printer.